All right, thanks for watching. And today we want to ev use epsilon and deltas to evaluate a slightly more complicated example compared to my previous video. Namely, we want to show that limit x goes to 3 of x squared equals to 9. And now let me quickly recap the definition of epsilons and deltas if you want to see more, you know, um, intuition behind it, please make sure to see my other video. So, limit x goes to 3 of x squared equals to 9. What this means is that for all epsilon greater than 0, there is, is delta greater than 0 such that for all x, if x minus 3 is less than delta, and technical point, x cannot be equal to 3, but here it doesn't really matter. So if x minus 3 is less than delta, then, so if the difference of inputs is small, then the difference of outputs is small as well. In other words, x squared minus 9 is less than epsilon. Okay, so here comes an important remark for today. When we say for all epsilon there is a delta, it means that delta, it could depend on epsilon. So can depend. on epsilon. Think of like your friend throwing you a ball. Your friend is epsilon, it throws you a ball delta, sorry, it throws you a ball and you're delta, you're responding, and your response, it's totally okay to depend on epsilon. If your friend says, hey, epsilon is one half, you try to do better and you say, aha, delta is one ninth, for example. So because delta comes after epsilon, it's okay to depend on epsilon. But the very important thing is, because delta comes before that for all x, delta cannot depend on x. Okay, so cannot depend on x. It has to be a delta that works for all x. Like a universal constant, if you want. And so now, let's do our scratch work uh, like before. So when we want to say there is a delta, what we really mean is we want to find delta. So it's like finding Nemo, but for delta. And for this, you really want to focus on this equation. x squared minus 9 is less than epsilon. So x squared minus 9 is less than epsilon. And we want to solve for stuff. And notice in particular here, this thing can be factorized very easily because x squared minus 9 is the same thing as x minus 3 times x plus 3. You said it's less than epsilon, and you get x minus 3 times x plus 3. And that's less than epsilon. And remember the equation for delta says x minus 3 is less than delta. So let's just solve for x minus 3 and it's less than epsilon over x plus 3. And now you might say, aha, great. Right, we want x minus 3 to be less than delta, so let's just let delta be this, epsilon over x plus 3. Aha, but caveat though, right? Remember what I told you, delta, it could depend on epsilon, so that is fine but it cannot depend on x. So our first guess isn't quite right because this guess depends on x. So let's try to do a little bit more work to make this not depend on x. Let's try to find a universal constant. And for this, what we want to use, we want to use the fact that x is actually not very far away from so, what do we have? Maybe a little picture. So this is 3, and this is x. And 
Remember, I told, I just told you, x and three, they're very close up together. So in particular, the distance between those two is small. So in particular, x minus three is small. And because it's small, it's totally okay to say that they're at most one unit apart. So because they're like, let's say, 0 0.1 centimeter apart, it's okay to say, hey, let's at least assume that they're one centimeter apart at most. So let's assume that in fact, x minus three is less than one. It turns out you can use this equation to solve for x plus three and ultimately find a delta that doesn't depend on x. So in fact, let's deconstruct this a little bit. So x minus three then becomes between minus one and one. Add three to both sides to get x is between four and two. Aha, 42. And then x plus three, if you add three, that's between seven and five. So this is x plus three, and we know it's between seven and five. So in particular, since everything is positive, it's okay to say that the absolute value of x plus three is between seven and five. And now take reciprocals. And remember, when you take reciprocals, you have to change the order. So one over x plus three, it's between one fifth and one seventh. Yeah. Notice if you actually made a mistake and you put one seventh and one fifth, you'd be like, hey, this is weird. I know that one fifth is greater than one seventh. All right, this is very good because then let's solve for, you know, multiply both sides by epsilon. And what you get is then the equation epsilon over x plus three is between epsilon over five and epsilon over seven. And remember that was our choice for delta. And we found that this choice that depends on x is actually between epsilon over seven and epsilon over five. And the question is, which one do you pick? Do you pick epsilon over seven or epsilon over five? It turns out both answers are correct because we know ultimately that epsilon is very small, but because we want as small quantities as possible and to make the end very satisfying, let's choose this to be our delta. So this is our new delta. It depends on epsilon, which is okay, but more importantly, it doesn't depend on delta, on x, which is even better. Great. So now we can write our proof. So part two, our actual work. Since I use Roman numerals, let's do Roman numerals. So our actual work. So as before, let epsilon be greater than zero. It's like, like our abra and abracadabra. So let epsilon greater than zero. Let delta, okay, here's an interesting thing. Usually you just let delta to be epsilon over seven. But there's just one little technicality because remember, we also assume that x minus three is less than one. So you wanna say, we want x minus three to be less than epsilon over seven, but we also want x minus three to be less than one. And to make this possible, just say let delta to be the smaller one of epsilon over seven and one. That's why you say minimum of the two. And let's suppose that x minus 3 is less than delta. x minus 3 is less than delta. 
then we have two things. On the one hand, because delta is the smaller one of the two, and we want x minus 3 to be even smaller, it means x minus 3 is smaller than both of them. So, and then we have that x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 7, and also, notice what we had here. We found that if, so also x minus 3 is less than 1, and from our work before, we found in fact that if x minus 3 is less than 1, x plus 3 is less than 7. Less than 7. Okay. Of course, if you want, you can redo the work, but we don't have to because you've already done this. And here we don't really care about the 5 because we want less than. Okay. Then let's see what we have. So, then, now let's look at our difference of outputs. So x squared minus 9. You've already calculated this to be x minus 3 times x plus 3. And now look, here's the beautiful thing. From this part, we know this is less than 7. From this part, we know this is less than epsilon over 7. So this whole thing is less than epsilon over 7 times 7. Here I use the fact that x is not equal to 3. Well, it's not very important. And here comes the satisfying part of the proof. The 7s cancel out, and you get epsilon. So looking at this whole thing, x squared minus 9 is less than epsilon. So, what have you shown? You've shown that if x minus 3 is less than delta, then x squared minus 9 is less than epsilon. And you're done. So you're done, and you can go home happy. And so, if you like this epsilon delta extravaganza and want to see more calculus videos, and more general math videos, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.